Now please give a warm welcome to Noor Khayyat, who is going to be talking about cat photography and child labor. Today I'm going to begin, but before I begin, I want each and every one of you to picture yourself as a seven-year-old child working in a hot, dull room, sweating away. And even though you're close to fainting and giving up, you continue. You continue because you're the only source of income for your family. For your mother is dead, your father has lost all his hopes and dreams, and you have siblings who attend school and they need you. In fact, this is reality, with 2% of Jordanian children aged 5 to 17 living the life I described. My name is Noor Khayat, and as part of my community project, I've chosen to design and make a photography blog, where I capture the lives of children in the child labor industry and give a brief description on their lives. And my goal was with every photograph I took to tell a story off the screen and onto the audience. And this all began as I was in the car formulating ideas on what to do for my community project. And I was interrupted by a little girl's knock on the car window begging for money. So I thought to myself, why not combine an issue I'm concerned about, like child labor, with one of my personal hobbies, photography. Because photography allows people to communicate what's important to them. It helps to preserve history. It enables communication. And it moves people in ways that sometimes words cannot. While researching on the topic of child labor in Jordan, I've come to the realization that we are not aware. And we required fundamental knowledge so that we could help abate this crisis. Now, child labor is not only selling gum on the street as we see it. We're not exposed to Jordan as a whole and we're limited to such a small part of it, Amman. Child labor is the employment of underage children legally or exploitatively. And there are 215 million children currently trapped in child labor. While they're working on a farm for 12 hours a day, inhaling the deadly chemicals while working in a factory, allowing an innocent child to carry heavy items, mining gold in underground mines, all of these acts are considered forms of child labor. And within Jordan in 2007, 2% of children aged 5 to 17 were involved in child labor. And the influx of the Syrian refugees has primarily impacted this issue and intensified it. So what I decided to do was to make two forms of advocation by virtue of a social media page and a website. I made an Instagram page and what I did was I added the photos of the children I took and a brief description on them, their lives and child labor with some quotes. And I decided to name my campaign Learn Not Earn as I stress on the significance of a child having proper education and not working under the hot sun or in hazardous environments. In addition, in addition to the Instagram page was a more formal approach, a website. I also added the photos of the children I took with a brief description on them, their lives and some background knowledge on child labor. So my, what I intended to do was to visit two children within Jordan, but as I visited Egypt, unexpectedly, a tour guide uh, was this young child. And I took this photograph of him captioning it, the boy in the Huntur. The horse always listens to me. I'm his master. A horse lives for his master. Amar, a six-year-old boy who lives in the countryside of Nal Delta in Cairo, Egypt. He earns, his, he earns his living off driving a horse carriage Huntur to show tourists around. A lovable character who unfortunately grew up too fast and lost his childhood, as he works like an adult from morning to dark. He recalled starting to work at a very young age, saying he cannot remember when he began. When I asked Ahmad what are his aspirations and his dream job, he replied with, I want to pursue my job. I have two younger sisters who attend the local school and they need me. The second place I visited was within Jordan. I photographed and interviewed a child who was a skilled mechanic in Ayn al-Basha. I took this photograph of him captioning it Grease Monkey, which means a skilled mechanic. My ambitions, I want to educate and hopefully become a teacher. 73% of child labor workers are child refugees who fled to Jordan from surrounding war zones. One of those 55,000 refugees happened to be Saleh. He fled the Palestinian occupation with his family and came to Jordan. A 16-year-old boy who masters the job of a mechanic in Ain al-Basha. He started working through someone that eventually hired him, leading him to working countless hours in a lifeless room. While Saleh is sweating away in a dark room with no light, right outside the door, children are playing in the daylight. When, when asked what he's good at, he replied with, anything to do with mechanics. Ask me anything and I'll find a solution. So the results of my project were overall successful, and I hoped my project would leave the child feeling a sense of uniqueness, individuality, and that he or she is not worthless. And after completing this project, I'm definite that these children do not only not have a normal childhood, but no childhood at all. Thank you. Thank you, Noor. You can clearly see how hard she worked on her project. Now, please. Now, please welcome Irina Bsharat, who's going, who's going to be talking about recycling. The stage is yours. Would 
Would you believe me if I told you that this plastic bottle cap can save a handicapped child? Hi, my name is Irina Absharat, and today I'm here to present to you my community project. One million of these plastic caps equals to one ton of plastic, and this one ton of plastic equals to 150 Jordanian dinars, as well as seven yards of landfill waste. These seven yards of landfill waste kill 340,000 kill 340, birds and animals every year. For my community project, I decided to focus on something unique. Since a lot of my classmates decided to um, focus on either orphans or sports. Since I was a kid, I've been collecting these caps with my grandmother and donating them to an organization called Green Wheels. This organization sells these bottle caps to, uh, to a recycling factory and with the money in return, pays for a year's worth of education for a handicapped child as well as a wheelchair. I had, to I had to brainstorm many ideas for me to spread the word and for me to raise awareness. I decided to make a web page, create a social media account, and give presentations. Unfortunately, creating a, so uh, creating a web page was not that easy, so I, so I wasn't able to do it. However, I still gave presentations to younger students in primary and to other schools. I also created a, web, uh, a social media page for those who are, who are always on their phones. At least I can get a little bit of motivation, motivation from them. In the end, to reflect, I think that I really could have managed my time better because there are a lot of things that I kept for the last minute, and that wasn't a good idea. However, it still was a very success, successful project, and I'm willing on expanding it in my 10th grade personal project. So before I conclude my presentation, I would like, like to ask you all a favor. For you to start collecting these caps and, get, and donating them or giving them to the school. I put two bottles just like these um, in the primary and secondary reception. Please do it, don't, don't do it for me, do it for the future generation. Thank you.